Hi, my name is Peter Walker, and I'm reflecting or springboarding from a verse, uh, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, a very famous verse where it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. This is in the context of having lost everything even the support of his men. These men were uh, tight with David, um, 600 of them, uh, because they were believing that he was anointed for uh, king. And um, so they were, they were believing with him. They were following with him. These were the guys that had his back. They, they believed the prophecy. They were investing. Um, David had even lost their support. In this same verse, it says, these men had begun to speak of stoning him. Their wives, their daughters had been kidnapped, raided, carried off. Um, everything was lost. It was dark. It was darker than dark. Uh, and David in this moment, it says, encouraged himself, strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And then he inquired of God. Should I go after what's been lost? Uh, we in this life um, know trouble. We know trouble. And uh, Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this life you will have trouble. Uh, then he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. Uh, in John 11, uh, Lazarus has died and Martha comes to Jesus uh, frustrated. He, he had been close, actually, a few miles away. She knew he could heal Lazarus, and Jesus had not come. Lazarus is now dead and buried, and uh, Martha is coming to Jesus. Um, it is such a tense uh, situation. There's a sense of her believing on Christ, uh, but kind of not, because later when he says to roll away the tomb, stone. It's as if she doesn't know what's going on. She's going, well, he's been dead for four days. Um, there's faith, there's hurt, there's anger, there's hope, but there's doubt. Anyway, Martha went to Jesus the same way David went to God. Martha went to Jesus, and Jesus in this moment crystallizes something in the heat of the moment, in the grief. Uh, Jesus said, your brother will rise. And Martha, thinking of the eternal, said, yes, I know he will rise in the resurrection. And Jesus at this moment says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. He is stalling Martha in a moment, moving deeper than what can be seen and tasted in this life. It is complete faith. And he's saying, Martha, my presence here now with you is life. John 17, 3, when Jesus prays, he says, this is eternal life, to know God the Father and the Son whom he sent. The presence of God is life. So much so that Jesus says to her at this moment, if you believe this, you will live even though you die. This is to connect with life, the very presence of Christ, even in the face of and in the experience of death. Christ's presence is the life. And he is challenging Martha, even in her grief, even in that moment. And he says, do you believe this? Because that belief that Christ is life, even in the face of and in the experience of despair and loss and threat and even death. Jesus says, you have got to understand, my presence is the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. And then he says to Martha, do you believe this? It seems kind of harsh. You know, she's grieving the loss of her brother and it's like he's redirecting her attention and going, hold on. Do you believe, Martha, that I am life? I am 
this resurrection you hope for and think of, I am it. I am the resurrection. I am life right here, right now. Though you die, you are alive in the presence of Jesus. Do you believe this, Martha? Very intense, taking her out of a realm of time in the moment of having lost someone to death. And he wants her to see that there is life even in death, in the presence of God. It is who we go to. We are going to experience loss and tragedy and confusion in our lives and in our neighbor's lives in this life. We're going to experience it. Jesus said we would, John 16, 33. He lived it himself to evidence a path of sorrow. But it's, it's who we go to in the darkest of the dark. Second Chronicles 20, 12. The, the king prays. He says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. This honors God. Luke 18, 1 to 8, Jesus is telling us, yeah, go ahead, persist, pray, ask me, come at me. But then he says in verse 8, when I return, when the Son of Man returns, will I find faith? Will God find us even in the darkness with our eyes on him? So when the light comes, it lights our eyes because our faith, we look to him. We don't have the answers. This is how we comfort one another. We don't have the answers. We bring our focus, we bring our faith alongside one another and say, we stand with you in the confusion, in the no answers, in the loss, in the tragedy. We stand with you in faith that Christ is the resurrection and he is here and hope is here and life is here. It's where we go to in the dark places. It's that we rise and inquire as David did. It's not to have the answers necessarily and it is not necessarily to even see a result though our hope wells up in us with God. His mercies are new every day. But it is where we go when we're knocked down, when we're, we're, we're crippled at the knees. Do we crawl up and lift our eyes to heaven? Psalm 121. Uh, that is the faith that honors God and that is the victory and it is in that place and space that we're not going to necessarily just find healing or find life it is in that space and place that we are standing with the resurrection and the life, even with someone buried. 